Welcome to the Art of Relationship Show. Greg welcomes live calls from listeners in helping with numerous marital and relationship problems. There will be no more tit-for-tat arguments. Greg gets to the root of couples' challenges in a rapid, matter-of-fact format, plus applies compassion and humor. Join in discovering how to improve your relationship and your own life. Listen, laugh, and climax. Greg is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Michigan. And to others, he's simply known as Detroit's love guru. <laughs> the Art of Relationship Show will help you reignite the emotional and physical intimacy. Plus, rebuild oh, trust shoot. in your relationship My bad. and marriage. Join Greg as he helps you become more connected and satisfied in your relationship. Oh, no way. The happened. Art of Relationship Show is for adult audiences. Parental advisory. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. This is the Art of Relationship Show. I had a little bit of feedback, technical issues, more or less. My apologies. That's my fault. So, have a special, special couple, um, Kevin and Celine from the Love Lab podcast. So, you got to check it out. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves because they're going to know more about them than I know about them. So welcome, and we're going to check the audio aspect a little bit too. So you might find or hear some double feedback. So if you hear of about it, people, please join in below the discussion as always. And we're going to kick it off with the Love Lab on the Art of Relationships show. We're going to be talking about sex. So welcome, you two. Thank you, Craig. Hello, Thanks, Craig. everyone. <laughs> cool. We are excited to be here because we love to talk about sex. That is so cool. And today, what are some uh, what are some things you guys want to talk about? As far as we talked about, you know, before we went on and everything about talking about um, what do I want to say? <clears throat> talked about better sex tips in bed. And you brought it up, Kevin, too. You know, who wants? Who doesn't want better sex tips to sort of? You know what? Be better to be that Adonis in bed to be that you know seductress maybe like your Celine, um, to where we can kick it up a little bit. And somebody, everybody goes after it and picks up, you know, sex tips in the bedroom because we want to be better lovers. The people that don't are the selfish ones, right? Maybe narcissistic, maybe they're just selfish and it's all about them, but we don't care about them because you don't want to be with them anyways, right? Right. <laughs> Let's face it, right? It's about self-pleasure and... What are some things that you have found that make a better, you know, better lover? Everybody talks about lasting longer, oral sex, the infamous, you know, a lot of women in my office talk about, uh, you know, Greg, he's not so sensual. The foreplay, he just sort of gives me a kiss and sticks it in right away. And I'm, I'm glad people can see me make that little uh, movement. But you look on those avenues and what, what do you suggest for your, your viewers and your uh, listeners? Well, I, I would love to take the listeners a step back, or maybe two steps back. Because when talking about sex tips and being better in bed, everybody wants to know about, you know, what's the little special move, you know, the triple tongue twist, whatever <laughs> it is thing. And one of the things that Selena and I love to talk about is the fact that, you know, having great sex starts long before you even get into the bedroom. And so creating what we call the constant state of arousal is kind of the first step because what happens is everybody's got a busy life and everybody's running around they got the kids they got the job they're overworked they're trying to you know do all the things that they need to do in life and then when they finally have time to sit down in the bedroom they're not really even in the mood and everything becomes sort of forced after that it's like oh we're supposed to have sex all right let's go through the motions so i think one of the first things you should really do is um, create that what we call constant state of arousal. So, Celine, maybe you could talk a little bit more about what we mean about that. <laughs> and, okay, is there a difference? That's awesome. I agree, and I tell people, you know, foreplay and doing the show, and I think we even talked about it when I was on your show, that you can build up the foreplay throughout the day. You know, text message, I can't wait to lick you, I can't wait to suck you, whatever. Um, that you can build that up. But do you see um, a difference, Celine, between how women want it and how men want it? Or is that too stereotypical? 
there is a difference, I think, in how people like to receive love. But not because it's men or women, but because it's like, you know, with the five love languages, how people feel the love or feel loved. Um, and what matters is to speak your partner's love language independently of what they are. So you could be a man who loves touch, and that's the the one way that goes straight to your heart. But you could be a woman who loves touch as well. And I think that there is a misconception that we think that only men are horny and want sex. Uh, a lot of women are very horny, and a lot of women want a lot of sex and have high libidos. And so actually, I don't really know if there's so much of a difference it's more of an individual thing and it has more to do with your stress level versus your libido so if you're very stressed if you like have a busy life like kevin was talking about or the kids and all of this and you don't take care of yourself and put yourself first and you'll be depleted and whether you're a man or a woman it will be the same like having sex will be one more thing to do it is uh, i agree with that and i find uh that's where there's a lot of misking communication, a lot of misconceptions out there that a lot of people look at, uh, you know what, oh, if a man, you know, they're ready to go when the wind blows, right? They get a hard on like this, and mm -hmm. when both people are stressed, it's it's difficult. So going back to, you know, sexual tips and the buildup and the anticipation, do you find a lot of men, um, and I've talked about this too, do you find a lot of men that just want to get right to it, or do they entice the ladies? And does that enticement, if you will, can that sort of go out through the day? And like Kevin mentioned, about build up the anticipation throughout the day, and do you love that? Do you, you know, how do you want it? And if what happens if you are in two different moods? Mm -hmm. One's more in a loving mood, and more one is more in a, I want to throw you up against the wall, rip your freaking clothes off. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> and, I mean, we talk about yeah. that a lot, actually. Oh, sweet. Well, Let's hear it. Hit me up with it. <laughs> well, I mean, for sure, when it comes to tips, uh, and as far as um, you know, sort of building the anticipation, yeah, absolutely. And just like Celine said, find out what your partner's love language is and give it to them, like, over and over again. Lots of little ways, because that will absolutely help. Now, to your other question about what do you do when one's in the mood to like rip, tear, shred, cow, and then the other one just wants, you know, soft and gentle. So, my personal approach is, um, I think sex really goes in the direction that the woman wants it to go in. And so, what I do is, I pay attention to where she is at. So, because there are definitely times where I'm like, man, I want to pound. Like, I am ready to go. I've got a ton of energy. You know, let's do this. And she's just like, no, no, no. I just want soft, just gentle, like, you know, tantric stillness, you know? Okay. <laughs> and sometimes that's the reality, right? So I have to follow her lead. That's the way I look at it. And that, I think that's awesome. So, Kevin, you're, we're talking to America right now. And I want to quote you. So you are saying women are selfish. No. <laughs> you know me. We joke around a lot. These two people, if you're listening, you know, Kevin and Celine, they're, they're awesome. You need to tune in. They're hilarious. Tune in. And, uh, oh, real quick, I want to say um, hello to uh, Hazaro from Malaysia. So I got people listening to the show from all over the place, which is cool. And uh, they just chimed in on the chat below. Hey, Tony, brother, welcome. And um, a lot of people joined in. in. So, well, Kevin was saying, yeah, it, it's sort of ironic in the old statuses about, you know, love and sex. And are they, let's face it, are they two separate things? Now, Celine was talking about, you know, love and all the, and sex. Are they two separate things? Should they be one separate thing? And also, you know what, is it always about the woman? Is like Kevin said, you know, it always anticipates on the mood of the woman. Kevin wants to do pound town, and Celine might want to be all lovey dovey dovey. And he's like, oh man, not again. So you look at these aspects, and are you able, are you able to look at the elements and be able to look at, you know what, how do you pick up on each other's moods? And can those moods can you know sort of Kevin's mood tune into lovey dovey and or Celine could sort of lovey dovey and turn into pound me pound me 
type of mood. Oh, Marlo, my apologies. There's your shout out. You were just asking me about a shout out to you. So there's your shout out, Marlo. I appreciate you joining in. So what's your take on that as far as the moods and throughout the day? Do you sort of ebb and flow or do you find it that Kevin is more or less following your lead all the time or your mood lead, if you will, Celine? Does that happen most of the time? And the people you work with and the people listen to, you know, the Love Lab podcast, what do you find out with that? Greg, I think it comes down to this. If you want more <laughs> sex, give her the kind of sex she wants. Oh, that's, that's so selfish. Really, that's that. That's but so it's, selfish. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm not teasing. About, uh, control and power on the woman's side. But we are constantly evolving, changing, moving creatures. And yes. Yes, we will change. It's very often that I'll be like, no, I'm not in a pounding mood and I want something different. And by the end of it, I'm like, pound me or give it to me or harder or whatever that is. And hold on, I hold on, hold on. I got to go to the bathroom right now. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Sorry. <laughs> so if a man knows that, like, we are, we change more. Like, what I have noticed is it's true. A guy will have a set of things, and it's more, I mean, even though men have cycles, it's different, and it's more stable. And for you, you have less of these ups and downs, and it sometimes is harder to comprehend. How can we go from one end of the spectrum to the other in 10 minutes? But knowing that, if you're not attached to a particular result and you can honor where you're at, uh, like let's say, okay, you want a pound and she's not, give her what she wants first and then reassess and understand that it's not set in stone. She's not like you. Like if she says that, it doesn't mean that's what's going to happen for the next 48 hours. It could be just for the next 48 seconds and stay with her. And then if you give her what she wants, she will be more willing to give you what you want to. And there's always a rule that I like to, for both people really in a relationship, it's the 60-40 rule, where you give 60% and then you take 40%. So if you always give a little more, but you both do that, that's how the relationship can overflow with love and great sex. I love that, Celine. I, I agree with that very, very much. I talk about, it's one of those the things that, you know, with couples and everything, I think uh, we might even talked about it when I was on your show about, you know, the one that, let's face it, the one that has the lowest sexual desire, that is the least horny in the relationship, they're the ones that control that, the sex life in the relationship, right? What do you find helps sort of kick that up as far as better sex tips? And we can, we'll get into the nitty gritty and the actual pounding, loving, and all that spank your ass stuff in a bit. Um, but what do you find sort of builds that up for women in general? And I know this is general. Everybody's different. We know there's guys that are only missionary, and there's women that loves whips and chains and nipple clamps and all that stuff. But in a general sense, what do you find that women really, what do they want during sex? Oh, that's a question for you. For me, uh, <laughs> you're the woman. What, yeah. tell us, what do women want? You, you look like you wanted to say something. <laughs> I think the number one thing women want, and I want to tell you to when we were speaking at the beginning about sex tips, because a lot yes, of guys, please. like Kevin was saying, they want to know the triple digit tongue move or whatever that is. <laughs> they put it into a technique, and the technique only goes like gets you that far. What we really want is your presence. And we don't want you to be thinking about the next technique you're going to do or the orgasm you're going to, quote unquote, give us or your orgasm that you're about to get. And we want you to be there with us. And presence means that you are Thank okay you. with wherever we are. Um, if we are screaming in orgasms, if we are crying or angry because there's things that come up, it means you're not afraid and you can stand here and be here with us. Just be here now. That is and so create, cool. Yeah, and create that safety container. And I think that's the most powerful thing or trait that a man can bring into the bedroom. And a, a lot of men, in all honesty, it's funny, I had a couple yesterday talking about when you know his you know wife is hurt and all this stuff, he feels stuck, doesn't know what to do. 
And I remember, um, we'll, we'll just say many years ago, <clears throat> that, you know, making love, uh, you know, making sweet love with somebody, and she had an orgasm, and, yeah, I'm like that. I'm a giver. But um, she had an orgasm, and she started crying, had tears. And it was like her first or orgasm, like with penetrative sex, whatever, in like 10 years, literally. And you're, I'm like, oh, shit, what the hell, you know? How was that bad? You're in tears, that type of thing? <laughs> so it's looking at, you know, and I'm, I'm hung like a gerbil. You know, I ain't hung like an elephant, whatever. And it's, I'm like, what the hell's going on? So, um, you know... And, you know, being younger and all this stuff, you're like, what the hell, you know? So, what, and it's hard, and the women, of course, let's face it, they want us, and Kevin might be able to relate to this, they want us to be mind readers, and we're like, oh, crap, what do we do? Um, and in that moment, it's not necessarily a training episode, is it? Or can you talk about that in the moment, oh, just, damn it, hug me. What? <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is, hold me, that type of thing. Or do you talk about it if this happens outside the bedroom and you don't necessarily know what might happen because a female's orgasm, of course, it could be tied in. You have a lot of emotional, pent up, maybe hurt, insecurities, um, trauma aspects that um, are pent up and they get released through orgasm. And have you, either one of you, experienced that with? Oh, God, I'm going to get you guys in trouble. With even with yourselves or in your prior <clears throat> life before you two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, we've had that exact scenario happen where we've had amazing lovemaking and then all of a sudden something will just sort of burst into tears or have some sort of emotional release. Yes. And here's my advice to the guys if they experience that. That happens when they're making love with a woman. The first thing is... Yes. Don't attach to it. It's most likely not about you at all in any way. Oh. So the problem is, is that guys, that happens, the guys say, what did I do? What, uh, something's wrong. Uh, so that's the first mistake they make is, is they internalize it, think it has something to do with them. It most likely does not. Just like Celine mentioned, there's a range of emotions and different feelings. And that's why they describe women like water, right? It's always flowing, always moving, always changing. Yes most likely has nothing to do with them. The second big mistake that men make is they try to fix it, right? How many times have you heard this one? Oh, let me, I'll, what's wrong? I'll fix it for you. And then it was, I don't want you to fix it for me, right? Here's so, a tissue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cry your eyes. <laughs> so, so don't immediately go into masculine man problem solving fixing mode, right? What you really most likely need to do in that moment is just Hold her. Just be there. Just be her rock as she goes through this, whatever it is that she's moving through. And then I, I would say, Celine, I mean, what what would you say that you would want from a man? Um, exactly that. That's always was one of my favorite thing with our love making is um, number one, you don't have expectations of how I need to have a certain reaction so you never like oh you have to have an orgasm it has to look like what this way because the other night you screamed my name to the top of your log and the whole neighborhood heard it true story um <laughs> so it has to happen every time uh and you're also not trying to fix me or telling me like that whole thing like what's wrong or stuff like you know like just back to the presence you, you're just here and there and you're just with me and the fact of having that person with me just allows me to get out of the mood or stay in it if I want, but there's no changing, no fixing, no nothing, and it just it moves through. <laughs> it really does. Which is great. Now, I, Kevin mentioned a good thing, and I, I recommend this as well. A lot of guys um, will try to fix it, right? And it's one of those things for a lot of guys out there. I want you, if there is an emotional, say, crying or she's freaking going into a psychotic fit from a wild orgasm, whatever, right? Try And Kevin mentioned, which is great, to be there in that moment because a lot of times, let's face it, men, they want to fix it. Oh, my God, what did I do wrong? That type of thing. And believe it or not, your intentions are good, gentlemen out there, but it can kill that moment for your partner. 
So you need to be able to try to be there with that moment, like Kevin said, hold them or just caress, you know, caress them depending what position you're in. <laughs> you know, try to caress them and hold them and just be there and sort of hold on to yourself, if you will. I'm not talking about your penis or your cock. I'm talking about holding on to yourself emotionally um, and just be there with them because a lot of guys, it's it's old scenario, right? You two, as far as women might just want to vent and the guy, oh, do this, do this, and they're trying to fix it, and it kills that emotional connection. Or I think Marlo or... Uh, Christy in the chat below said something about, you know, the intimacy that is shared during that moment. It'll kill it. And then, like, almost like resentment will build, and you don't even know why. What'd I do? What'd I do? You know, that type of thing. And then there's that resentment. Oh, you don't get me. You don't get me. And all of a sudden, guess what happens the next time you try to make uh, sweet love or you go to pound town? Do you understand? What is her mindset going to be? I can't do this. I can't write release. I can't be fully um, free to release me. So guess mm -hmm. what happens? It stifles the experience. It might stifle the the power of her orgasm and everything else. And okay, now even her willingness to have sex with you. You know, then thank she'll you. start to say no more often. You know, or have excuses or headaches or things why she can't do it. She'll be less willing because she doesn't feel safe. That's what it is. She doesn't feel safe to really allow herself to just open up and let whatever needs to move through her move through. So if she doesn't feel safe to open up, what is she going to do? She's going to shut down. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, agree full heartedly. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. Cool. I need, I need, you guys don't want to move to Detroit, so I got to move to San Diego now. We, no. <laughs> As you, yeah, I'm in, I'm in a sweater and it's raining like 40 degrees here in uh, Metro Detroit and you guys are out in the sunshine and pfft, anyways, no. Um, now, okay, are there special tips? We'll get into those too. Are there special tips that are be able to look at, um, you know, that kicks up the pleasure of each other. We're talking, you know, we talked about your, I don't even know if we talked about a little anal play, if guys like that or they think, you know, if they like it, they're gay. No, it's who's doing it, right? So are there special tips that you recommend? Oh, I got to give a shot. Hey, Mary, welcome. Old friend, yeah. You make me smile when I hear you talk, my old friend. I'm not old. So, anyways, I'm being a smart ass. My old friend. Anyways. <laughs> oh, now, Marlo, you better not move, Greg. Are you talking to them or me? I don't know. <laughs> but going back, let's get the sex tips and everything. What are some things that really take it to the next level where you quiver in ecstasy? Okay. I want to start. Okay, go for it. All right. So, number one, worship his cock. Outside of the bedroom. Wash and his the, cock. What? Oh, worship. I'm worship sorry. It's an accent. I'm being a smart ass. It's, sorry. It's okay. Worship <laughs> is. Oh, I love this. I got to ask, though. How do you, you're probably going to tell us, uh, how do you worship his cock? Yeah, that's a great question, Greg. So here's what it looks like. For a guy, you go to his heart through his cock. And every time he's like, I've got a boner, I want to fuck, or like, look at my penis, actually celebrate his penis. Offer some spontaneous blowjobs, cock rubbing, cock squeezing, nothing that has to go to an ejaculation and orgasm, but just like a five minutes blowjob or a three minutes little cock stroking, just acknowledging. And I know it sounds crazy, but it really... Oh, no, I'm me. loving it. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is going, yes. yes, yes. Me, going, me, yes me, and me and Kevin, well, Kevin's over there. Touch me, touch me. I can't. I'm by <laughs> my side. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I'm going to start. Yeah, right, Greg, where's your hand check? My hands are right here. I'm not touching myself yet. So you guys are all, I love you guys. <laughs> so that that sentence alone usually gets couples to work with me because oftentimes you know I'll send them a little proposal, tell them what I'm going to teach them, and that's the cock worshiping. And usually that's when the men are sold. They're like, yeah, we're working with her. <laughs> need to know what she has to say. Um, all jokes that aside, it creates an environment where it feels also safe for a man to be a man. That means to be all about his sexual energy in his cock, but not to like not to cut off from it and not to put it down or not to like make any fun of it 
the more he feels celebrated in his masculinity, the more he'll be willing to show up in the bedroom as well. And so that's how I think of it when you were saying, oh, it's the guy who has to listen to what she wants for the lovemaking. I'm like, yes, but she also celebrates his cock outside of the lovemaking. And that's how it works. And then both of us, both the men and the women, feel really good. And that's what it, it's that ebb and flow, like you said, this given 60%. You know, taking 40, it's that ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. But if it is, and I, I still, it's it's sad, and it sickens me. I still hear a lot of women and couples in my office here that, you know what, it's always about him. And mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, what do you mean about that? Now, a lot of guys, to believe it or not, they just, they haven't been taught. And it sounds, there's some guys that have been taught, and they're all about them. And I say, yeah, you need to dismiss their ass. <laughs> and get someone that wants to please you. So it's still sad. Do you find that out, that there's still men out there that it's all about their pleasure, um, and it's through a lack of knowledge, like you're saying? And also, what about women? Do you think women are timid, like they don't know how to worship his cock, or they sort of get anxious, they get nervous, and they turn it into like a, oh, let me worship your little pee-pee, and you're like, that just killed the mood, right? Oh, okay, I'm done. It little. That's the advice for the women. It doesn't matter what size it is. I'm done. It no, I know. I'm, oh, look at your cute pee-pee, and you're just freaking done, you know? What's your experiences, guys? There's a couple things in there. The first one is when it comes to worshiping a guy's cock, don't treat him like he's a little boy, like the little cutesy stuff, like, oh, you're so cute, or oh, like your little peepee, -pee. like, no, like, treat him like a man. You want him to show up like a man, treat him like a man. So this, the second thing that I wanted to say is, you know, um, oh, God, I just forgot it. Wait, you go, you go. <laughs> your, 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 other, your other head is thinking. So, no. <laughs> there were things in there uh, that I wanted to address. That's the second one. That okay, one of the, the second thing that I think you're thinking about is a lot of guys come in as givers, but really they're takers. Yes. So they take energy under the guise of giving. And no wonder the woman don't want to say it's all about him because it's like, well, but I'm doing all of this for you, but they're doing to get something. And the women are very intuitive and feel that. So if a guy approaches a woman with the intention of giving but yet is taking, and it's a very subtle distinction and we work, you know, it, it takes more than one show to really get into it. Um, so we'll just leave this at that. But we work with people on that because it has a very, like it has subtle ways of showing up and, and being in, in a relationship. But if you approach her with the idea of like what's in it for me, she will feel it and not want to open up. Absolutely. It's you need to and you know, teaching guys and women alone about giving. It's like uh, a lot of people, you know, when they give a massage, oh, it's all about that person receiving the massage. I said, No, it isn't. Are you able to experience the pleasure by touching what say her or his skin feels like, the curves? the subtleties of the body that you're able to absorb and what the touch is and, you know, absorb that pleasure at the moment that you're also giving. And a lot of people, they have a hard time comprehending that or understanding that. And I love that, Celine, how you mentioned that. It's cool. So I remembered my second one. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it was in response to your comment about the guys where it's all about them. And what I would love to tell the men that are listening to this is that you can be all about you and what you're going to get back is a certain level, a certain amount. And what they don't realize most of the time is if they make it more about her, she'll return tenfold, right? So, you know, yes. there's that whole saying, like, uh, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but, you know, you give a woman, you know, this and she'll make that out of it, right? Correct. Like, it's the same way in the bedroom. And so I, we try to tell men all the time, it's like rather than just saying, I want it to be all about my penis, you know, for 10 minutes and then you're out and you're done, right? Make it about 30 minutes about her and she'll return another 40 or 50 or 60 to you, right? <laughs> and that's the thing that they don't realize is that the more they give to her, the more she's going to give to them. And so if they really want it to be all about them, the best way they can do that is to be all about her. Absolutely. And I want to, and this is, you know, going on what you just said, Kevin and Celine, there has to be authenticity. 
about it. And, you know, what Celine mentioned about, you know, guys, oh, I'm doing this just to get it out of the way so she can please me. I'm going to tell you, she's going to, women are intuitive. They're going to pick mm -hmm. up on that, and they might be afraid to tell you. And ladies out there, like you've heard me on numerous shows before, never, ever, ever fake your orgasm. Never, ever, ever fake. You know what? That he is doing it for you. That, you know, oh, that was so great, and you're lying to him because you're not doing yourself any good. And you're not doing him any good to train him. If he doesn't want to be trained, maybe you're with the wrong partner. <clears throat> how how blunt Absolutely. is that? So being authentic, you know what Kevin and Celine said, being authentic and being genuine and giving and you know, concentrating on her pleasure, oh my god, she'll anyway, she'll go on and on and on to help return that favor for you, which is terrific. Absolutely, and, and, that, and that's the, the piece that Celine brought up uh, prior to me fits in so well because it's exact, exactly what you just said. You have to give to her with the intention of wanting to give to her. And so many of the men that come to see us and work with us, they say, oh, I'm a giver, I'm a giver, I'm a giver. And then when you watch them interact with their partner, they are taking. It's all about taking. Everything they do is to just get. And that's really a big mistake that a lot of men make. So you want to give to her, and you want to do it because you want to give to her. And then just let the magic happen, and she will return it. You don't have to take it from her. No, not at all. And there's a big difference between, I know a lot of women, and Celine might be able to chime in big time on this, representing the ladies. You know, there's a big difference between, you know, giving and taking. And what is your concept about sex tips, talking about that? You hear women, I want to be taken, and then a guy does it. And then you're like, oh, my God, you were all about you, and you were rough, you were this all about you. And I'm like, okay, so tell me and tell the rest of us guys out there, both of you, Kevin and Celine, about what it's like for a woman to want to be taken. Ooh. All right, so number one, we have to put a foundation that men, you cannot expect... Or women. Basically, you cannot expect your partner to be a Jedi mind reader. So, what does it mean to be taken for you? Ultimately, this should be a discussion that you're having outside of the bedroom. Yes. Because yes. what I want is going to be different than what somebody else has want. Absolutely. Thank you. I am not into BDSM. I am very vanilla. So, for me, being taken would be thrown on the bed, uh, having some or uh, maybe oh i'm gonna I'm, I'm going to i'm going to do you right now woman that would be the extent of how uh, the, the verbiage should be like i don't want to be called slut or bitch or anything like that but for somebody else that's what they would want right and then it would be uh, whatever some appreciation i would need to have some appreciation because it's my love language um and so whether it's of my body of I don't know how I taste, how I look, or whatever that is. Uh, and then it would be like pretending that he's doing his way, but actually he's totally watching how I'm responding. And he knows that if I wince a little, or if I do this, I'm not really liking it. Or if I tense up, he stops. That's my version of being taken. Ask another woman is going to be very different. And, and I, ask me again tomorrow, it's probably going to be different. And on the moods, and like Kevin said, <laughs> the, the water, right? It always changes, ebbs mm -hmm. and flows. The temperature, you know, mm -hmm. the, the current, all that aspect. And it's it's so true. Everybody is different. And that's where, you know, I get into certain books that apply. All men are like this. All women are like this. They're so different. And you have to be able to talk about this stuff as an individual. Forget about, well, oh, I've been with 10 women before and they did it. It doesn't matter. It's who you're with now. And that goes for you, ladies, with the guy um, you know, that you're with currently. It's not about the past. It's about mm -hmm. right now, the present, and understanding your own individualities and what you like when it comes down to being taken. Now, real quick, Kevin, do you like Celine to call you a slut or a bitch? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. She gives me actually lots of nicknames. I'm really good at it. You know, like, um, Superstar. Yeah, yeah. Master cock. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She gives me those kind, and they work great for me. I love it. 
<laughs> that is funny. Um, oh, we got a... Semen beast. <laughs> oh, the semen, semen beast. Oh, there we go. Um, real quick, we got... Uh, Marlo mentioned a question about... And we talked about this, so this might be uh, maybe a refresher. What about when you give everything to your man and he doesn't give it back to you? That's what mm -hmm. I want. And that's sort of going back what we said, you know, when I said about, you know, deuces, you might want to get rid of him. Or if it's a woman, it's all about her, not about you. You might want to, if they're not willing to be taught, maybe you need to uh, part ways. What are your takes with that? Would you do that? Would you Absolutely. recommend that? I totally second that. So number one is we do live in a society that's all about throwing away things and discarding things. So don't just discard it because it's not doing exactly what you want. Thank first. you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, remember the love and remember the whys. And so if you have a why that's compelling enough why you're together, like find ways to to come together, literally and figuratively, but get seek some help, you know, work with some sex coach, intimacy coach, relationship coach, or therapist, like people like all of us here, we are here to help you. Um, talk about these things and find ways to have both parties being heard because maybe there is some resentment, maybe there is something, maybe he's not feeling loved in the way he needs to be loved and that's why he's not able to give. Um, and maybe you are doing everything you can. After you've tried everything you can, after you've tried hearing each other, listening, and doing all of that, if it's still not happening, then yeah, ditch the person and move on. You know, don't stay with somebody for their potential or because you have a fantasy in your, in your oh. head. You have to be able to be happy with what you have. If nothing changed in your relationship for the next five years, like down the road, like would you still be happy? If your answer is no, then then do something to change it now or move out. That's really how I see it. I definitely agree. What's your take on that, Kevin? Do you agree with Celine? Well, okay, let's face it. You're you're in a tough situation where you have to agree. You're standing next to her, but no. Go ahead. I know. <laughs> no, one of the things I love about our relationship is I don't have to agree. If I have a different opinion, I'll say that. That's and how it should be, me. people. That's right, and I'll still get laid. Uh, that's, oh, that's even better. <laughs> but in, in this particular case, I completely agree, which is, you know, if, if he's not returning it, you know, try to find out why that is. And, and whether it's he's not returning or she's not returning, there's usually an underlying need that's not being met. So do the work, like both of you said, work with somebody that can help you get to what that is and figure it out. And if at the end of the day, the person simply isn't willing to do it, then you need to look at whether or not you need you want to stay in that relationship. Very cool, guys. Awesome. Uh, we are going to, uh, I guess, wind down a little bit because of time constraints. <clears throat> so we will. Um, I appreciate you uh, both. You guys, you know, I love you guys to death. You're awesome. Um, oh, real quick, I want you to be able to announce and after the show, if you can go on my Facebook page, either public figure and post all your info your web you know website podcasts i want to absolutely be able to promote that a lot more for you too and also um i need to ask when is our show that when i was on with you guys when's that coming out today oh sweet what timing that is, i thought you mentioned it but i got it was so busy with the legislation it's already up oh it and I believe I we tagged you in it so it's oh, cool. your new page. So people can listen to it. I thought it was funny because we pre recorded the show and then we decided to come on your show. Yes. So today was the day we came on your show and today was the day of the release oh, of cool. your show with us. So awesome. We did a double banger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now what is a double a double banger or double donger? What, no. <laughs> okay. So if yeah, please, you know what? Pitch all your stuff out there where people can find you, can listen to you. Um, like I said, they're they're just phenomenal, very knowledgeable people. And I am uh, actually very, very critical of uh, aligning with other people. So I'm very, very happy and very flattered they're here. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. Um, I was thinking as we winding it down, of course, if there are any last minute questions that people want to ask in the chat, keep an eye for that. Uh, but I wanted to give a few, like, uh, since we said we we're going to give some tips um, and kind of as a little recap, I think number one tip is know yourself and know your body and know what you like and what you want so that you can 
talk about it. Number two is communicate about your likes, dislikes, wants, desires, fantasies, things that could stretch you or things that you're afraid of. Don't be afraid, like don't hold back, especially in the communication. Just because you're saying you have a fantasy of being gang raped does not mean this is what you want. Correct. But being able to have a container where you can speak about those things with your partner will create juicy intimacy and that will take the sex to the next level. Then with knowing your body comes tell your partner what you want and need and then be willing to listen to your partner if he's like a little lighter on my cock because not all guys like it like it like rough and fast they like it slow too they like back to my cock worshipping you know there are multiple ways of stroking a cock and doing it gently it's not about like how fast can I milk this you know um, and same with her like for him is like Remember, she's got an entire body. Just because you like to go to your cock first, she likes her entire body to be touched before you go to her pussy. And so remember that it is reversed. Um, uh, the way to a man's heart is through his cock, his penis. And the way to a woman's heart is through her heart, but that's the way to her pussy is through her heart. Great. And that's really how it works. Absolutely. And we, you know, talk about the tantra and the neg the polarities. We'll get into mm -hmm. that later. Go ahead, Kevin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, just every, everything that Celine said, and I would also add what we talked about in the very beginning of the show, which is for a guy, the presence piece, mm -hmm. to really Thank be you. there. When, when you've made the decision to have sex with your partner, you're not thinking about your work or, you know, the kids or... You know, even even if you're trying to last longer, you know, there's that that uh, idea of like think about baseball or something completely unsex related. Well, we your grandma. Do that. Yeah, because that takes you out of the moment. So it's that idea of like really be there for her. What she needs to know is that you are 100 percent there for her. You are her rock. Just if, if you could take nothing away from the show, men, just do that. That will instantly make everything else you do in the bedroom better. Awesome advice. Now I want you guys to promote the hell out of your show and promote the hell out of yourselves, man. Where can people find you? <laughs> All right. So people can find us. Um, number one is on my personal site, Celine Remy. It's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com. Um, and go to the Get Started page. Also, there is a sex vault where we have all of the freebies we've created over the years. I think there's like over 20 different things in there. Um, there's all the things that I'm doing with Kevin and the things that I'm doing on my own. So there's both for men and women. The sex okay. vault has everything in there. Sorry, yes. one real quick. That you're doing with Kevin, are you talking on a personal level or a business level? <laughs> I'm being a smart ass. Sorry. That's another website. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I just had to. Ask. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. <laughs> and then um, our online courses, you can find them at powerandmastery.com. And that's everything that Kevin and I teach for men to increase their sexual skills, stamina, last longer, have harder erections. Like there's three different courses. Um, and then, of course, every Thursday is when we release a Love Lab episode. So you can find the Love Lab podcast on any platforms from like iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. We're trying to, to be everywhere. <laughs> we insert ourselves. We cannot get rid of us. <laughs> you guys, you guys are tremendous, man. You guys are awesome. So people, please follow, follow them. Find them, listen to their stuff. They're very educational. They know their shit as well, okay? Or they wouldn't be here. How, how blunt is that? No, they're great people. <laughs> Not only do they know their stuff, they're just dynamic individuals, just great people. Thank you so much uh, for being here, you two. Remember, the Love Lab podcast, check them out. And as always, you can check out my website, The Art of Relationships. Dot org. Thank you so much for everybody, all the support. Everybody have a, oh, it's Halloween. You know what, real quick, why can't all the ladies, you know what, they're free to dress sort of slutty and freaky and sexy for Halloween. You know what, we need Halloween every freaking day of the year, people. Let's promote that. <laughs> Woo-hoo!
Oh yeah. Three hundred and sixty five days of the year, not just one. Thank you, Kevin. That's awesome. Thank you guys. Peace. Take care, <laughs> everybody. Thanks.